Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you on this Lord's Day, and as you know, this is um, the week that we've been waiting for, our Word, Spirit, and Power Conference. We moved it to January. We felt that the direction of the Lord as, um, as a symbolic or, if you like, prophetic act, that um, we would be empowered and strengthened and encouraged as we learn more and more about standing and about living this year as a year of victory. God is setting us up for incredible things, and we want to be ready. We want to be ready, and uh, he's going to help us. And we're so thankful to begin this year with Word, Spirit, and Power. Now, Justin has shared the schedule with you. If you've forgotten, it's in the bulletin. Uh, the only thing that's different this year is that uh, RT was not able to be with us on this date. Um, the scheduling uh, just couldn't get coordinated for him and the team and for us, but uh, that's okay. Somebody sent me a text last night and said, well, um, if RT's not here and we're focusing on um, Jack with the Spirit and Charles with power, we just leave our Bibles at home then, don't we? And I said, bring two, bring two. Uh, of course, they were being funny, but um, we are so delighted to have these two men with us. You know them. We're going to have a chance to love on them all week long. Would you give a welcome to Jack and Charles as they come today? Daddy, where'd you go? Hi. <laughs> it's good to be here. Amen. At our age, 173. <laughs> it's good to be anywhere. <laughs> but I walked into this place, into your praises, into his presence, and I'm revived. I can't Amen. wait to hear myself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is Can you think all? of something to say? I'm, I'm delighted no. to be with you. We miss RT because I don't have anybody to pick on. <laughs> now, Jack is nice. And I get to spar with RT. And of course, part of that is RT is high intellect and knows how to respond. <laughs> But I'm overjoyed. Now, why are you laughing? Oh, I'm overjoyed. Jack, bless you, brother. Oh, excuse me. Are you ready? Yes. Go sit down. Somebody help the boy down. It is so good to see you. And when we talked of beginning something, I love new beginnings. I love Jesus because every time I see him, he's new. He's now. The Holy Spirit is God where it counts, God here. And uh, uh, don't, don't mix them up, just praise them all. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is here soul representing Jesus who's working at the right hand of God interceding for you and uh, the Spirit is moving and the Father is available. Look at me and let me talk straight to you. God knows exactly where you are. He knows what bothers you. He knows the hopes that have been crushed in you. He knows those things you're waiting for and he hasn't forgotten anything. All right? So we're going to preach about 20 minutes, each of us. I'm expecting God to do things he's never done, take us places you've never been, teach us stuff we've never known, and bring us to a place where we've not been before. If the kingdom is anything and it's everything, 
It is God's plan of eternal upward mobility. Every time I see you, you ought to be able to answer, it's better than it's ever been, and it's getting better. You're looking at me, somebody said, you, you've got to be kidding. You're just a mixed up old man. No, 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 I've been through this. Folks, every down is an up. Every disease is a healing. I read a verse, maybe completely out of context, but it said the only reason for anything to be hidden is for it to be revealed. Look at me. I don't care what you've got that bothers you, a mystery, a pain, a waiting miracle if God doesn't come through, you're sunk. That's just a detour to God's best. I just can't wait to preach what God's given me to preach today. So would you pray? God, speak to me and help me do what I hear I need to do as a result of what you say is true. Would you do that right now, Father? In Jesus' name, we listen to your word, and we do not do it for entertainment or even for just encouragement. We do it because we want you to bring us to the best, to the best we've ever known, and put us on the track of it's getting better every day. In Jesus' name. I generally preach on the Word. I'm going to preach from it today. But I want to tell you about this book. This book and your relationship to it marks the possibility of being correct, if you will believe it, on every issue that you will face, every problem that you will encounter, every piece of bad news that would frighten the world. There is nothing in your life, past, present, or future that is not dealt with in this book. It is replete. It is complete. It is up to date. It's a miracle in its origination. It is inspired. It is a miracle in its continuation. It is preserved. It is a miracle in its illumination. It is understood by the presence of the Spirit. Love this book and know that when you leave the road and find yourself in the ditch, it's because something is in here that you've stopped applying. Did you hear that? By the way, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Choir, you're beautiful. Fantastic. Now for 15 minutes and 8 seconds, you listen to me real closely because I'm going to preach fast. It's important that you believe wherever you are, wherever you will be, that the greatest truth of your life is that Jesus Christ is there. And I want you to know that the presence of Jesus Christ by his Holy Spirit is here. He's absolutely here. He is as here as he was the minute he was raised from the grave. He is as here as much as he was in any and every miracle mentioned. That's the thing. Don't miss that. We're not forlorn in a time of godlessness. It seems that the devil is winning. I remember a little poem. They say uh, that uh, God was in the beginning and winning. But it seems that the devil is winning. But he's not. God has a plan. And that plan is up to date. And God has a church. And I'm part of it. And the one I'm part of is winning, and hell is not stopping it. Amen. About the time I hear the gospel of those who say the church is done, there is no such thing as a good church, I remember, I remember one church, Christian Life Assembly. I said, I need to take you there and let you walk through, and you'll know God's not through with the church. Turn with me to, Matthew, to John chapter 2, please. And I'm going to read the first miracle that Jesus performed. I love it. Listen to it. On the third day a wedding took place 
in Cana of Galilee, and Jesus and his mother uh, was there, uh, and his disciples were invited to the wedding as well. When the wine ran out, listen to it, when the wine ran out, our mother said, they don't have any wine. What is this concern of yours? And to me, dear woman, Jesus asked, my hour has not yet come. In other words, it's not ready for me to act. It's not ready. <clears throat> and, and this is important. She said, do whatever he tells you. Folks, we've missed, we've missed the blessing of Mary. We ought to herald this woman's life and ministry. If everybody believed Mary, everybody would be saved. <laughs> Listen to what she said. Whatever he says, you do it. Look at me. Whatever he says, you do it. He's going to say a lot of different things today, and I'll tell you what he's going to say it about in a minute. And uh, now there were six water pots, jars, used for Jewish purification. Each of them held 20, 30 gallons. 20, 30 gallons, there were six of them. That's 120 to 180 gallons. Whoa. Fill the jars with water. You think they knew what they were doing? No. God's going to tell you to do something you hadn't thought of. You think it's silly. You think it's light. He's going to tell you. Uh, fill the jars with water. Didn't make any sense to them, so they filled them to the brim. Then he said to them, now draw out some water and take to the chief's, uh, chief uh, uh, servant, to the, to the master of the feast. And they did it. When the chief servant tasted the water that had become wine. He didn't know where it had come from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. He called the groom and told him, everybody sets out the good wine first. Then after the people have drunk freely, the inferior. But you have saved the best wine till now. Now that's vital. This performed, Jesus performed this miracle in Cana of Galilee and displayed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Listen to it. His disciples believed in him. You better, you better do that every time you read your newspaper. You better do that every time you watch television news. You better do that every time you think about the mess this world is in. Yeah. The glory of Jesus is coming. I'd like to talk to you for these minutes left on what happens when Jesus is there and has his way. It's simple. He always, always. So the thing for you to establish right now is to know that Jesus Christ is there in you, with you, around you, among his people. That's very important to know. You need not be discouraged any longer than it takes to say, Jesus Christ is in me. That is my hope of glory. He is in this world, and he's going to save this world and take us to heaven. But in the meanwhile, he is showing the devil off. He is insulting the devil. He is building, a, God is building a system of faith that is eternally flourishing right now. Amen? Yes. You have nothing to dread. You have nothing to fear. Did you hear the songs? Here it goes. When Jesus is there, four things, four things. I may get to all four, I may not. Number one. He always isolates the human problem. And I want you to know you're not telling Jesus anything he doesn't know when you say, Lord, I've got, I've got a problem. And that's where he starts right now in you. Some of you have been disappointed. Some of you have been betrayed. Some of you have been depressed. Some of you have a ship coming in. You're hoping it comes in next week. Jesus Christ, recognized in presence, 
will take you to the source of the problem. Listen to Mary. She sized it up. She said, hey, they're out of wine. Now, excuse me, that wasn't grape juice. That's wine. Make you drunk if you drunk a whole lot of it. Just don't worry about that. It was good wine. And in one fell swoop, Jesus made 180 gallons of it. Plenty. When Jesus addresses a problem, he is never bothered. He is thrilled and is about to do something about it when your agreement reaches his. Okay? Anybody discouraged? Anybody in pain? Anybody hurting? Anybody have a situation that is humanly impossible? Wonderful. The only reason for you to be sick is to get well. The only reason for you to fall into the ditch is get out of it and walk straighter next time. The only reason to be absolutely baffled is to become certain. That's just how it works. And so don't be ashamed to, to say, Lord, there's just one thing that bothers me more than anything else. Tell him. He knows already, but if you don't, you need to tell him so you'll hear yourself identify your situation. Everybody with me? Okay. Are, are you all right? Anybody hurt? Okay. Number two, wherever Jesus is, he always utilizes human instrumentality. I like that. I'm a dumb farm boy with best inferiority documented complex in my county. I knew nothing. I didn't even suspicion anything. I was the final of three boys. Got saved by my little sister born seven years later. I was nothing. I knew nothing. I didn't have enough sense to have any hope about life. I was just living it. And not anything happened that would encourage. I mean, I was a, in a school that had 150 in 11 grades. I had a 12th grade and I skipped a grade. And by the way, I can't do fractions yet. <laughs> I was so bashful I couldn't look you in the face. I tried to find something in my life to give me some identity. There were seven able-bodied boys in the high school, and when we fouled out on the basketball team, we had to finish with four. Our best year, we won three and lost 27. <laughs> there I was. But you know what? God pays no mind to what he's got to start with. He has a destiny for you. Own it and get with it. Amen. Here's Mary. If she had never done another thing, now she becomes the catalyst in a miracle. Whatever he says, you do it. He always identifies the human problem. He always addresses it. He always utilizes human instinct instrumentality and he always reverses human inclination life works like this the devil gives you the best he've got he's got if he gave you less than the best he's got you you wouldn't be impressed with it so he gives you that which is shiny and that which is temporarily at least seemingly valuable and then when you're so deep in it he trashes you in every way but Jesus reverses human instrumentality. I'm an old man, Charles a little older, but you know what? I'm minutes closer to heaven than I was a few minutes ago. I'm toward my best. I'm going upward. When I die, I'm not going descendingly, I'm going ascendingly. He didn't go down, he went up. That's the way it is with Jesus. He always utilizes uh, instrumentality, and he always, uh, he always reverses human inclination. Did you hear that? 
Hey, say these words. It, it's getting better all the time. Say it again. It's getting better. It's getting better all the time. Say it again. Now, you're not feeling that yet. You need to say it until you believe it. He's saved the best till now. Stop living in the while agos and letting the past steal. Stop living in the after whiles. It'll ruin you as well. Live in the now and you will never regret it. Are you hearing me? All right, one more thing. I have two minutes and 51 seconds to do it. Here we go. He always glorifies himself in what he does. And the disciples and, and, and Jesus displayed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Folks, this is not a ploy. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm just here to tell you what God said and if you're wise, you'll do something about it. Everybody here right now do something about it. Some of you are old and think you've been passed up. Get over it. We need millions of older people today who know more in their little fingers than these, these young people growing up have in their whole beings. They need us. We need you, young people. We need you, middle-aged people. We need you, educated. We need you, uneducated. We need you. God needs every one of you and he is displaying his glory, and if you're looking in the right place, you will see it. Amen? Amen. All right, let's sum it up. When Jesus is there, by the way, is Jesus here? Yes. I mean, just yes? yes? Is Jesus here? Yes. All right. How much is he here? This is going to shock you. He's more here than you are. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I'm just here, here, and I, I suppose I'm as here as... No, he's more here than you are. You see, you're just here, there. I'm just here, here. I can't be here, here, there, and here, here at the same time. But Jesus can. He's more here than you are. He's back there in the corner. He's in every person here. He's up here. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. So let's establish the fact that Jesus Christ is here and brought his kingdom with him, and that's available to you right now. So breathe deeply and take it in, and the result will be... The use of human instrumentality, the reverses, the reversing of human inclination and the glory of Jesus Christ revealed. Would you please say yes to his proposition right now? Just say yes. yes. Yeah. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop being depressed and I'm going to start praising God. I want you to know that when, in my aging years, I recognize that the temptation to be depressed more frequently attacks me than ever before. I don't have to, I don't have to bow to it. Not for one minute, not for one second longer than it takes to remember the gospel of the kingdom. You know what that is? God rules. <laughs> hear it, Democrats. Hear it, Republicans. Hear it, Libertarians. Hear it, Independence, hear it, everybody. God rules. Charles, come and preach. I'm going to do something this morning I can't remember having ever done before. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat <clears throat> something that I shared with you, I think, last time. But I feel like God's given me an unction that will be of benefit to all of us in my sharing it. I told you that some years ago when my daughter was single, living in Atlanta, and overnight in the hospital, I was standing at her bedside, and I said this in prayer to God privately. I said, Lord, I'm glad to be here, but she doesn't need her father here. She needs her husband here. Now, that was said in a prayer. 
and instantly the Holy Spirit spoke a scripture into my mind relative to that fact that she needed her husband with her. And it was a strange scripture. It's in Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 11, 7, 11. Now it came, it happened the day after that, that Jesus went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And Jesus said, young man, I say to you, arise. We know the story he did. Now that night, when I was standing by Cecile's bedside, that's the scripture that the Holy Spirit quoted back to me. I said, she doesn't need her father, she needs her husband. I was instructed in that moment to say, young man, I say to you, arise. Now, they're here tonight, or today, been married 35 years, and the same, hear this, the same apparently moment that I said that, young man, I say to you, arise. Buddy was miles away. They were not dating. They knew each other, but weren't really impressed with each other. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, Cecile is the girl you are to marry. He heard that. Surgery was the next morning. It was simple, quick. That night, <clears throat> Buddy came, sat at her bedside, and fed her. He did the husbandly thing. And they now are grandparents themselves, and I'm wonderfully a great-grandfather. Now, I, what I feel God telling me this morning relative to this is for us to realize that there are needs in each of our lives. In your life, you may be wanting a husband or a wife. You may be needing a job. <clears throat> you may be facing a financial situation or maybe a domestic issue that you want and need God's help to resolve. I think that touches everyone in the congregation. We have some here who can't hear, and the signer is giving them the interpretation of what I say. I remember years ago, a good man in my congregation who was totally deaf in one ear, could not hear, came up at the end, and he had to play the television so loud that the neighbors in the next apartment were very unhappy. His wife couldn't stand it. <clears throat> he came up for prayer one Sunday morning. I don't now actually remember praying for him, but later his ear popped and he could hear, and he was an elderly man. Now, there are needs that we all have. We may have a physical need. It could be an emotional need. But there is nothing common to man but what the power of the Holy Spirit can correct it. I was in Florence, Alabama years ago, and this is, things like this have happened since my baptism in the Spirit, 1977. And by the way, I'm now in my 70th year of ministry. I was... <clears throat> <clears throat> I was preaching in Florence, Alabama at Christ Chapel Church, and they met in their gymnasium. It was a large, lar and it was packed out, a large congregation. Before the service, I was coming down the aisle, like here, got to say this point, coming to the pulpit, 
And the Holy Spirit stopped me, said, turn around. I turned around, and he pointed to a um, youngish woman about five seats in and about five or six rows from where I stood. I had never seen the woman in my life, to know her. Didn't know anything about her. And the Holy Spirit said, call her out. I did. Called her out, laid hands on her, and she hit the floor. Nobody caught her. She just hit the floor. I then left her there, started toward the pulpit, got this far again, and the Holy Spirit said, stop, turn around. I did. She had gotten up and was going back into her seat. And the instruction was, call her out again. I did, went back, laid hands on her again. She fell out again. This time, what interfered the first time, she dealt with. She told me later, she said, I was lying there on the floor that first time thinking everybody here is staring at me. And I don't believe in this. And so she got up. That was when I went back. She told me later, lying there on the floor, she said, I felt an electric current going through my right arm. And she had ruptured three discs in her neck and could not use the arm at all. She couldn't turn a key, couldn't open a door, couldn't pick up her purse or her Bible, could do nothing with her right arm. It was in constant pain. After they got home that night, and her daughter was asking her, Mama, what happened? What happened? And she was explaining this sensation she had felt the daughter, they were in the kitchen and sitting at the kitchen table. The daughter leaped up, went to the refrigerator, and got out a full unopened gallon of milk. And my, the, Rose Smith, this woman, said, I thought she had lost her mind. We were talking about one thing, and then she jumps up and interrupts and hands me the gallon of milk. And she said, I reach for it with my left hand. And, and the girl said, no, Mama, you're right. And she said, before I realized what was happening, I reached out with my right arm and swung that gallon of milk over my head. <clears throat> now, she was healed. Now, I mentioned that only because there is nothing in your life God Almighty cannot do. Now, we live in a strange world, granted, in which there are cross currents of the power of God and the powers of darkness and our sitting in the middle ground between. And we're influenced by both. <laughs> Apparently what happens is that when we being the deciding factor, most of the time, when we embrace and accept the fact that God totally loves us and God totally wants us, and God has total power over us. When we come to that moment of realization, and I don't know that I'm even there, but when we come to that moment of realization, bang, the Holy Spirit then is more free to accomplish in our lives those things that need to be accomplished. Now, understand this. It doesn't matter whether you are in financial need whether you are facing serious medical problems, whether you're being evicted from your house, or your husband or wife is divorcing you, or you have a child that you don't know where that child is, and you're praying desperately and earnestly, God, bring my daughter, my son home. Hear me, please. There is nothing too far for God to mess on. When I was pastor in Atlanta years ago, I was in my, de in my office one, one morning, and a woman from Augusta, Georgia called, and she was weeping. She said, Pastor, and I didn't know who she was, and she had never met me. Someone had given her my name. And she said, our teenage daughter has run away from home. We don't know where she is but we think she probably went to Atlanta. She said, will you please help if you can? And I said, this hesitation, you know, first of all, 
the city, Atlanta is a city of several million people. Finding your daughter accidentally isn't going to happen. But I said, we're, if you pray and I pray, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to find her, wherever she is. We agreed to that and, and hung up. I had not waited at my desk. I never got up more than a few minutes when the name of a hippie bar in Atlanta came to my mind, 10th Street District. And I'd never been there, didn't know actually where it was, but I knew that it was. Well, I called them, and I asked them, I said, will you put an announcement on your bulletin board, assuming they had a bulletin board? Yes. I gave them the girl's name, and the message was, you don't have to come home, but please call. Hung up the phone. I was still sitting at my desk. Still had not gotten up when a little bit later the phone rang and it was the mother and she was weeping. She said, our daughter just called. Said she went in the bar just a minute after they posted the note and said when she saw it, she realized that's not accidental. This is God. And then two Sundays later, Cecile may remember this. Two Sundays later, the family was in our congregation. Now, this comes back to you and to the command of Jesus when he said, young man, I say to you, arise. And the Holy Spirit has given each of us far more liberty and far more power than what we're using. What we're going to do, Buddy and Cecile, I want you two to come up here right now. What we're going to do, we're going to speak to those situations in your life. It may be more than one. I want one of you on this side and one over here. It may be more than one, but we're going to say to that problem, and we're going to call it young man. We're all going to call it young man, but we're going to speak <clears throat> to those situations, and we're going to command it to arise. And by that, we're going to command the problem to yield to the voice of God, not us, but to the voice of God that commands the problem to correct itself and to be corrected. Are you ready for that? All right. Do you have it or several identified in your mind what the young man is? Do you? All right. I want you to stand. We're going to do this believing God Almighty to hear. Some of you are in need of finance. Don't be afraid to acknowledge that before God. You may need work. Don't be afraid to identify that as the young man you're going to speak to. Whatever it is, mental healing for someone, Holy Spirit, we ask you, seize this moment. Seize the moment. This is your flock, Lord, your disciples, your believers, each with a need. And now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're going to speak to that need. Now, buddy, Cecile Benjamin, you are going to join me, and you are going to repeat these same words. Young man, I say to you, arise. Are you ready? Count of three. One, two, three. Young man, I say to you, arise. 
Young man, I say to you, arise. Do it. Young man, I say to you, arise. 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 Hallelujah. 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 How many of you have pain in your bodies right now? Would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. If you have pain in your bodies right now, all right, we're going to speak to the pain to go. Lord God Almighty, you are the healer. You purchased Jesus, that healing for us at the cross. And now in your name, we command the source of the pain, the source of the pain to be healed. Pain be healed. Say this with me. Pain be healed. Pain be healed. Pain be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Amen. 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 Justin, pastor, come. Father, we have had a strong sense of being brought into your presence for such a time as this. This is not just services. This is not just a tradition that we have in this church. You have brought us here to liberate, to separate, to sanctify, to empower. Now, Father, we believe that we have heard the heart of the Father, and we believe that we are going to experience more and more of the manifestation of the grace of God. You are teaching us to stand. You are teaching us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, even in difficult situations. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we receive the touch of God. We receive the intervention. Lord, you're moving in ways that will get us out of our rut and out of the doldrums in which we have tried to sail and we just haven't had any wind in our sails, but you are coming in power right now to bring us to the place that you promised us about. And so we say, come, Holy Spirit, come in Jesus' name. Now, loved ones, this is the way we want to end the service today. We want to ask the worship team to begin to worship, and what I'm going to ask you to do is now begin to step out into what you feel God is speaking to your heart. This is about, this whole conference is about a new generation and a new level. It's new, this whole conference is, in, in my heart, is about teaching us to stand in situations that are coming. And this is not about God coming and knocking you down. This is about God giving you power to stand. So what we, and, and by the way, let me say this, you'll get knocked down before the week's over probably. Nothing wrong with that. But this is the way I want us to end this service. I would like for us to fill the altar area. If you can't get into the altar area, just stand where you are. But I want us to end this with praise. I want us to march forward from this opening service into the remaining services with the praise of God in our mouth, the song of the Lord in our soul, and we're saying, Lord, we're coming. Like Just, just like Matthew, we're going to leave our table of occupation. We're going to leave the things that have preoccupied us. We're going to leave the attitudes and thoughts that we thought could not continue without us, and we're going to follow him. We're going to leave our nets. We're going to leave our table, and we're going to follow him. My pastor used to lead us in a song. He says, my Lord knows the way through the wilderness, and all I have to do is follow. We're saying we're going to follow. 
So when the, when the singing begins, and this, this will be our dismissal if you need to go, but when the singing begins, if you want to begin to walk in that fresh river, we just want to ask you to come. We want to ask you to come. Hey, most importantly, if there's anyone here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please get a hold of me or Justin or, um, or, or, or one of the Word, Spirit, and Power team and just say, I want Jesus. We'd love to pray with you today. God bless you. Step into the river. Step into the river. Step into the river. God is doing a new and beautiful thing in our midst.